Hello, everyone. Since this is either a highlight, a standalone book, or the first episode in a series, I'm jumping in to remind you what the rules are for this podcast. First rule is no real people stories. That means that any details from our own lives are merely anecdotal. We do not read books about real people, and we are not reading historical fiction. The second rule is that we are basing our analyses off of how the author treats characters and what they put them through. We are not judging the accuracy of the trauma, the accuracy of any actual conditions that may be portrayed, nor the authenticity of a character's reaction to that trauma or that particular condition. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The hosts are not trained professionals, and their opinions come solely from personal experience. In this episode, we discuss fictional depictions of trauma and violence that may not be suitable for all audiences. Please take care of yourselves. Specific content warnings for each episode can be found in the show notes. Events in the media are discussed in approximate order of escalation. This episode contains spoilers. And I'm Robin. And today on Books That Burn, we have a guest. Please introduce yourself. Hello, I am Heather, the mysterious other sibling. Ooh, spooky. And as you say, the other sibling, don't you have more? Yeah, but they're not on this episode today. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we are discussing Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova. And for our factions, we have Alex, Nova, Rishi, and Alex's mom. Uh, so, for Alex's mom, uh, she doesn't get a whole lot of screen time because she gets kidnapped along with, like, the, the rest family. of Alex's family, pretty <laughs> much. Like, just like all of them. Um... <laughs> And we're talking about the mom and not either of the sisters, because don't worry, they're the protagonists for like the next two books. We're going to focus on her mom like a bit here. And, and we are going to do this is going this is actually going to be a, a three part series, which we haven't yes. done in a while. So, yes, this is like an actual series, not a highlight. So, yes, you're going to get three lovely episodes with the Brooklyn Brujas. Very excited. Um, yeah, so she's stuck in the other dimension, and the thing is, like, other than it's bad, and there's, like, some implied, um, psychological torture, and I think also some explicit, because there's, I don't know if the person doing it meant it to be, it wasn't meant to be a fake threat of you're never going to leave. It was meant to be a promise of you're never going to get to leave. Your daughter's not going to be able to rescue you, etc., etc. Um, luckily, the point uh, is that Alex is going to go try and rescue them and fix things. But it was intended to be a promise and not just a threat. Um, that they would be stuck and consumed and all kinds of uh, bad things. And the mom also has so. already gone through losing her husband and trying to raise the kids, trying to keep the family together, trying to do all of this on her own. And then all of a sudden she is helpless and stuck away separate and unable to actually be there and help and and is very much shunted to the sideline mm -hmm. which i cannot imagine i i say that i have been in situations where i'm shunted off to the side and want to help and can't do a thing i don't like it <laughs> so yeah and they were also very aware of what was going on with alex throughout the entire thing as well so she's watching it mm -hmm. And unable to reach through, help, do anything while also going through the torture, while also uh, being tormented and, and everything. Because, like, the various members of um, Alex's family keep trying to contact her. And usually it's 
one it's like one of her sisters who actually manages to talk to her but it's it's very much explicit that her mom is like right there you know saying things but not able to be heard because it's only like one specific person at a time who can make the connection work and also um, her mom so is she a has- healer as well is somebody who mm-hmm. literally gets into crisis with people and takes care of them and helps them and gets them out of it and like make sure they're okay and then cannot do that yeah like doesn't later she like quits her day job to just like help heal the neighborhood full time like mm-hmm. pretty much she spends her time helping people and fixing things and then because she gets kidnapped she can't um and we are calling it kidnapping because of I mean it is yeah, yeah. it is <laughs> and we're not saying I don't know. It just feels weird to say that Alex kidnapped her mom. Alex no. was positioned so that the action she took caused her mom to be yeah. kidnapped. A- Alex so did for, not for the pedants out there. For the pedants out there, like myself, we understand the distinction. But trauma wise, well, she got we're, kidnapped. We are not saying that Alex is the one who kidnapped them either. Like we no, are no, not no. even pretending to say that at all. But yeah, Alex no, explicitly Alex saying, it. yeah, <laughs> Alex believes yes. it, but Alex is wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and we will we'll talk about that later. That. <laughs> <laughs> later, because yeah, sure, Alex thinks this and is wrong is kind of like a lot in this, but yeah, um, and it's definitely I would say that the being helpless and and set to the side and and all of that, you see at the beginning of the story how long. Alex's mom has been trying to take care of them and raise them and heal them and and not just like physically heal them, but make sure that they're emotionally doing okay while Mm -hmm. not taking any time for herself while putting them Mm -hmm. first. And Alex is watching her mom be not okay, but they just don't talk about it. And, And then she gets put in a place where she can do even less and is then also now being in danger and and being hurt and everything um throughout this entire series there's so much compounding trauma (laughs) that happens to Mm -hmm. this family oh (laughs) so much and in terms of like the author setting up this situation i appreciated this method of getting the family out of the way so that the teen hero could do the adventure hero stuff that didn't involve like outright just their dead killing more parents <laughs> yeah right um because you know that's the start of of many teen protagonist fantasy adventures and i appreciated the missing instead of <laughs> just dead yeah and like there's a there's a little bit of this I didn't even know my kid was struggling trying doing this thing either. Mm-hmm. Like there's this moment of I it, very near the end of the book where the mom is basically just like, "Hey, why? <laughs> like what even was happening here?" And and Alex is just kind of like, "Well, I was handling it on my own." And her mom's basically like, "Nope, <laughs> you weren't." <laughs> and then that's it. That's the whole thing. But yeah um like this family is very bad at i'm going to take care of myself so that no one has to take care of me (laughs) but then the entire rest of the family is looking at that individual going can we help you please but then they do it themselves as well 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 also yeah the thing is this is not just a family who goes i'll just do it myself and help myself this is a family who does so by and and not by harming but like it harms in family. doing so it harms everybody else in the family and so everybody is kind of looking at the person going hey could you not punch me in the face instead of talking to me about this thing so i can like you know there's there's so many things you. i'm trying to do it on my own like, so it doesn't what? affect you and it's like that's not working <laughs> aren't it's you not. glad that i springboarded off of your like actual nose and eyes instead of like I don't know, going around? Going around would have hurt more, right? No. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, it is tricky when you have, like, an entire family of people who they all want to do the rescuing, but also yeah. to never be the ones rescued. Yeah. And when everyone has that mindset, doesn't uh, go well. it, it, it sucks to be them, and it makes for great plots. Good storytelling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh gosh. Yeah, just put your trauma into writing and it writes itself. Oh man. I feel like we have an episode where we talk about that. <laughs> like I think we just mentioned it a lot maybe in our early ups like it's easy to find the trauma in books because that's what makes plot happen. Yes. Yeah, um and the way um western style literature ties together plot progression and conflict and tension like that Mm -hmm. that's that's part of what lets our podcast mean that we can pick up pretty much any western book and definitely some that are non-western but like the way western literature does that so much right makes it particularly uh when in like, when in doubt, you can ready for a that Western style book and be able to write on the trauma. Yeah. Yes. On to Nova and family rejection. Uh, we're gonna try and keep it low. Spoilers. <laughs> we'll um, do our best. But th- this topic, discussing it in any detail, spoils. A major twist. Um, so, uh, just just warning there. All right. So, all right. Here goes spoiling the twist. If you haven't started the book, this will tell you nothing. If you've started this, it's a major spoiler. Um, so Nova's family wasn't, or they they didn't they didn't perform the ritual that would keep his magic from killing him. He comes from a kind of not kind of. He comes from a, a broken home stuff's messed up like i don't like broken in the like he lived with his grandma not with his parents type of thing yes like i don't know whether the i don't remember whether the parents are still together but he is not with them whatever that situation is and because this magic is deeply tied to um ancestors and it it's like there's this whole this isn't I was born with the whatever, whatever, blah, 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 powers from like a magic. No, this is it's like it's from their family and like um, it's from the traditions. It's from the bloodline. It's passed. Down. Yeah, like out Al- like yeah. Alex's Alex's family, like their I believe it's their book of cantos. Um, they it uh, it like, you know, they they add pages and then when it falls apart, they rebind it and add even more pages like like the care and just like over you know definitely hundreds of years of just people pouring care and knowledge and traditions and everything into this text and you know it just ties into all of the stuff and, and then no we death meet day. nova who has to at the beginning no family we don't even know that he has yes. a family we know nothing find out mm-hmm. that he has his grandma but pretty much has no one else they tried to do this ritual that would keep his magic from harming him and everything. And there's not enough of a connection because it was just, I think it was just his grandma. So it was like, there wasn't enough yeah. to actually keep him safe. Um, and in this kind of setup, if they it's have enough- a desperation now mm-hmm. for the rest of the series to try and not have his magic kill him to try and, and take actions and, and it sets him up for trauma on his end throughout the rest of the series and it kind of has the implication that like not only is he not close with his parents but like they're not close with their extended family and they weren't close with them before they died and so all of this means that when the point of this ritual is that like the love and protection and whatever of the ancestors is what will keep the magic from killing him Mm -hmm. and then they don't have enough of a connection and something that i um appreciate is that it 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 shows that like someone attempted an intervention they tried to fix things <laughs> so i they try to fix things and it yeah, isn't I, enough and it doesn't actually help him at all right because like a lot of times in books that like have magic it'll be like no matter how long like you could be like one inch from like it killing you or whatever like you know i rewatched iron man recently and you know or whichever one of them it is where like the thing is like almost killing him and then you you do the 
whatever reverse thing to save him just in time, and it do- undoes all of the stuff that was messing the person up. But this doesn't have that. Like, they did the thing that if they'd done it at the right time, and they had been able to do it the right way, it would have been enough, and it would have fixed it, and it wouldn't have mattered that they couldn't do it earlier, except here, like, no. Like, sometimes you don't get to just take it all back. You don't get to just, like, fix it and have it be better. And, like, this even shows up with Alex, because, like, her ritual gets delayed. And so she's under some of that same pressure for different reasons. And she now, she has a smaller but permanent mark just like Nova, because the what what happened changed her and it hurt and even though they're able to do the fix for her something happens because it's not in time and nova Um, is also traveling with alex this entire time watching her wrestle through things and getting to sit there and be this um foil then i don't know right now if it would be officially a narrative foil or not but it's like the she's complaining about things and he's like but you have that you have a way to fix it you can do the thing right like be grateful like i'm helping you fix this because you can i can't right like she's in this mess because she didn't want this thing this thing that he would kill to get um (laughs) Uh (laughs) like yeah yeah she she's like well you know i uh, you know feel bad and like I shouldn't have this and I don't want this and it makes things messy and complicated and I don't want it. And then plot ensues. And and she also doesn't take him seriously at the beginning of the book at all when he's mm-hmm. literally sitting there going, I've already lived through this. I already know this trauma. Don't mess with this. What are you doing? Why? Like, what are you going to do? And then helps her. Um, mm-hmm. Help her. Uh, helps her. And it's again out of desperation and it's again out of that like small almost just desperate hope of but maybe i can fix it maybe i can make it go away um and he he wrestles with so much and he's also somebody tries he he tries so hard to not share anything he tries so hard to be stone-faced and everything and then just ends up like giving up all the information um but there's a lot that he doesn't share with people there's a lot that we don't see going on on the inside until it breaks and when it breaks you're like oh no hold up where did that come from why is this what's happening and then he's like well because of all of this stuff Mm -hmm. um because it's been building because even with alex her trying to like hold it to herself her her siblings are there like uh what's wrong what's going on talk to us what's up um and they needle it out of her whereas nova no one's asking questions no one's seeking him out no one's trying to figure out what's going on with him and so he's literally off to the side falling down the pit Um, and it doesn't talk about this specifically because at the time alex doesn't understand the significance Mm -hmm. but i get i get the feeling that you know the adults can look at nova and tell that that's why his arms are like that yes or at least enough of them to mean that he has this visible thing that marks him and lets people know that he is it very much reads both connected to and well yeah and it it means that he's both connected to and distant from this community in a particular way because he's close enough to feel ostracized because if he were just not in it at all doesn't have anything to do with it you know like other than being close to alex rishi wouldn't know and didn't know and didn't care that she didn't get invited to the death day party because she didn't know that there was one or you know any of that Mm -hmm. the only yeah other than you know what's going on with your literal birthday with her talking to Alex. Like, other than that, like, she doesn't have any reason to suspect that there's this whole thing she's missing out on. Nova is close enough to know and understands exactly what it is that he's missing and exactly what it is that Alex is 
giving up on and turning away from when it's just all that he wants. Um, especially when like the Bonds and Alex's family, they're like, they're, they're rocky, but they're absolutely there. And I love, um, I love for his journey, like we're dealing with magic, right? We're not dealing mm-hmm. with any like substances or anything like that necessarily, but his journey is a very good and at least from my personal experience um in my line of work and everything a fairly accurate like level of circumstances how background how you're raised how your family how support impacts your choices impacts your options and then how desperation Mm -hmm. can then lead for you to make decisions or set yourself up into dangerous scenarios because of the potential mm-hmm. payoff that somebody else with like with a different support group is literally sitting there going, that's not worth it. And this individual mm-hmm. is going, it's it's my only shot. Of course it's worth it. Um, and I really loved how they showcased that um, throughout, I mean, again, the whole series, but like in this first book, especially as we're really getting to see where he's from and, and what he's gone through, just that, that line of if you don't have the support whether it's from family or friends but you don't have that um circle encompassing you and stuff happens you don't have anyone to fall back on and you have to make these decisions and you you get put in situations that genuinely wouldn't have happened anyway but now they're your only option exactly and now they're your only option and so people coming around and trying to judge him you don't get to judge him because you weren't there to help stop it (laughs) you don't get no no no. you can help fix things now but you don't get to get mad at him for these things but even though hurt is caused and people are mad like again it's a difference of like judging the actions versus being like hey that affected me um which is a very key distinction but it, it was very cool for me to read through and be like this is how it can go. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the only way, but it's definitely a very recognizable shape yeah. of how that can work. Especially when, like, you know, he, just my last thought with this, like, he he mm-hmm. wanted this, tried to get it, and then eventually, it doesn't matter. It's it's just not enough. And yep. Yep. Alex, she's able to to get enough soon enough that it does fix it for her yeah um even though she very foolishly um rejected it and it could have been totally fine the first time if she hadn't decided that she didn't want this (music) on to alex and misplaced guilt um so much guilt layers and layers of guilt uh we say misplaced and alex is like no 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 it is properly placed on me which is definitely absolutely where it goes even though i was a literal child and am still just a teenage child clearly this is all my fault um so that's Alex. So when we were reading this <laughs> series, Alex was Robin to... actually said, hey, when you get to the end, I want to know which character you relate the most to of the, the no. three sisters. And I think I shocked them a little bit when I said, I relate to Alex. Um, now, see, that see, makes reading total it, sense I to me. Understand. The, the, that makes total sense yeah. to me who did not read so it at the same time you guys read it earlier. So Alex feels that it is somehow her fault that the family has fallen apart that um trying to not do the spoilers that uh, very early on <laughs> that in, things know, happen things that happen. definitely had nothing to do with the baby and choices, the family choices at the time. happen circumstances happen anytime anyone in the family isn't okay alex is like it's my fault i should have done this i didn't do this tries to take it into her own hands makes it worse um makes decisions that literally impacts the family uh and from my end i as a very young child took on emotional responsibility for something that wasn't on me and literally thought it was my fault and had to process through that that again impacted the family um not to the same extent though none of you guys got kidnapped good job um (laughs) 
but oh well okay <laughs> <laughs> uh but it's very much she walks around with this anger she walks around with this ev- like emotional eggshells but tries to think that she's protecting people and and so much happens that if she hadn't tried to put it on herself but instead actually you know not even like laid the blame but just had gone the chain of events that caused this didn't have me be the catalyst i am not to blame for this could have been handled better and and things could have you know worked out better uh but like just even with the the ritual that we've already talked about she specifically sabotages it to try and protect her family yeah and it doesn't work <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's probably the only thing really that i will put in this book and say that she should in any way say that she was a part of the cause for and even then she's not the one she's the one that made her family vulnerable she's not the one that actually did the thing right so and to the degree that she's the 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 bit that (laughs) it's like the main the main plot thing in this book she is the proximate cause for why they're in this mess but like the root of like all this guilt that she has that is part of why she thinks she doesn't deserve this shouldn't be in it shouldn't actually have this magic or whatever all of that goes back to this thing that she is absolutely not responsible for yep. and that's like her dad not being around and there's this tension over like is he dead or is he just missing and you know some people in the family are grieving like he's dead and some people are acting like he just stepped out and he'll definitely be back and she and her siblings all have different levels of how comfortable they are with talking about him or thinking about him and it makes for all these like like emotional like minefields as they interact with each other because they don't they're not in agreement over what happened and they're definitely not in agreement about how bad everyone should feel about it but they're also not talking and that lack of like communication about it leaves room for alex to think oh the thing that i did when i was a literal small child is clearly the thing that makes all of this my fault and because him being gone then makes all these problems for her mom and all this tension with her siblings. And then she feels like everything that's wrong because if he were still around, it clearly wouldn't have happened. And that means that everything, no matter how unrelated that's bad, that happens, she feels like it's her fault. And I want to say- Because it's his fault he's gone. um, Her fault that he's gone. Also, there's this like, that whole nebulous, you know, is he coming back or not? Or yes or no? That, I it feels like, from the way Alex describes things, feeds into this feeling of, like, well, if I just do good enough now, then mm-hmm. I'll decide. Or if I do bad enough now, I will decide whether or not he comes back. So, again, going mm-hmm. with the how the author actually managed to write the thought process and the evolution of decision to causation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Alex's thought process of I was small child and I did this thing and it impacts this thing, even though they aren't actually connected in my brain, they are, is a very real thought process that genuinely mm-hmm. happens to kids that go through trauma at a young age. Um, and so again, I just am very appreciative of this author for like we're dealing with magic and other realms and and uh things that you know arguably most likely aren't real and yet she's taking that um situation and letting us see how it actually emotionally realistically can turn out for someone you have the sisters who each the sisters who each process trauma very differently and have different levels of responsibility and different roles within the family and it impacts how they absorb it and alex is angry and blames herself and again uh, as you guys said tries to make up for it and tries to have some control and have 
uh, the ability to decide the outcome for something that literally isn't in her hands. And it's a kind of um, uh, magical thinking, not in the this book has magic sense, but in the magical thinking of if I just if I do this, that will make this it's every literally unconnected but emotionally connected. It is potentially thing happen. Now I will say this. The dad did not choose to disappear. But aside from that piece of it, it is the, my parent has walked out of my life. How can I make them come back? Thought process Mm -hmm. that so many children have when they lose a parent to something other than death. It is that thought process. The difference is what she's dealing with is other realms and magic family uh, rituals, not how how I get yeah, to but even, at school. Um <laughs> Right, but even with regards to her her dad being gone, the information that she has about it is, is like the normal amount yep. of non magical information yep. that someone might have about this situation. Like that's how much she knows in this book. It's the same um, thing as the so, question of why did he mm-hmm. leave? What when did he leave? How did he leave? Is it my fault? Is it not my fault? All of those same questions. Um which are if I remember correctly, she was the last one to see him. Yeah. Um, so it's so, so applicable. I love it. I yeah. hate it, but I love it. It's well done. <laughs> like, this is where it's not just a, if the magic didn't exist, this trauma couldn't have happened. Oh, no, no, no. This trauma we see all the time. It's just the catalyst yes. for this was a magical thing. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah. <laughs> um, Yeah. One last thought. It also means that she's trying to take responsibility for even more things that are, like, objectively not her fault. Mm-hmm. Or objectively not her place. Yep. <laughs> or, obje- yeah, not her place to try and take responsibility for them. Like, even they're literally the- things that are other people's job, responsibility, and lives, and she is getting very, she gets very controlling with them in ways that they yep. push back against and, like, she gets, like, upset or stressed out every time someone in her family who literally have magical healing powers, like, heal her mm-hmm. because the, the magic echoes and so they have, like, a version of the hurt that they heal on her. And she's like, oh, no, you healed me and it hurt you. Why did you do that? And they're like, I literally am a healer. Yeah. This is, uh, this is I, I, you did not force me to heal you. I volunteered. Back off. <laughs> yeah. So, I have a question. Have you ever wanted to get into comics, but you just didn't know where to start? Well, welcome to Comics Quest. I'm JD Martin, and every week I sit down with a guest to talk a comic that I think anybody can pick up and start their comics reading journey. We take a look at psychedelic sci-fi, fantastic action, heart-wrenching love stories, and of course, superheroes. So, check us out at CertainPOV.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. On to the wrap-up and ratings for our gratuity rating for kidnapping. Um, the literal back, the literal kidnapping is like mm, moderate to mild. Like they're in gone. It's not an an extended traditional kidnapping scene or anything. But like the ex- and then the extended period of being confined and kidnapped is largely off screen. Yeah, I think it's mild because really the sole extent of the kidnapping is we know that they are technically missing. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, that's we are, really it. They tell us it was a horrible time. Right. <laughs> and but, they give no details. Right. We didn't really go into it any more than they do in the book very much. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, then for re- Rejection. That is, um, yeah, severe. And then a bunch of it's also backstory. Like we're not like this. This doesn't have scenes with the people who did the rejection, right? Um, it's just kind of the book of the aftermath. Yes, <laughs> and it's yep. yeah. Yes, we we have a whole lot of a person without support structures going around being a person without support structures. Um, Which I would argue is maybe moderate, even because mm-hmm. okay, yeah, the, the 
without spoilers, the extent that that is affecting him is not a severe depiction, but that's mostly because it's not his point of view. Right. Yeah, we don't have his narration, and so we only have however much Alex picks up about what's going on with Nova. Right. Which, honestly, she, quite frankly, doesn't really put that much mental energy into him at the, like the, in, Im- the impact in his... is very noticeable but you're not putting the reader through it to that extent right and our yep. and our main yeah, character yeah. our point of view character is not really like focusing on it like it's definitely there if you're reading and trying to figure it out or understand it and empathize but like mm-hmm. alex really isn't trying to do that um misplaced guilt how do we feel? Severe. severe. It's either moderate or severe. Per- like, personally, this is- it was severe. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We'll take Heather's word for it. <laughs> Reading uh, through it was very... If if it's not something you struggle with, you're probably... You're going to be aware of how it can impact you. It's going to be a very good depiction. For me, there was a lot of moments of like, oh, I was a bit too on the nose. Um, <laughs> uh, uh-oh, they were accurate. <laughs> yeah. So... But it's 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 also a, um, yeah. If you if you haven't been through it, if it's not something you've struggled with, you are aware of what's going on. You are able to follow, even if you don't agree with why it's that way. You're able to follow her thought process and and know why she's feeling what she is. Absolutely. All right, integral, interchangeable, or irrelevant. The kidnapping. I'm gonna make a bold, bold declaration. I think the kidnapping is integral to the Ooh. plot how dare you uh, i know i know you might disagree with me but i'm i'm like i'm pretty sure <laughs> um i think all right the family rejection is interchangeable no I was, yes no, I was, hold on hold on i was gonna say oh you oh I oh think it's interchangeable the family needed to get put out of the way it didn't have to be kidnapping that's fair mm, the, but the plot revolves around attempting to reverse the kidnapping yeah, but and they I feel like she could have been attempting to reverse something else. Yeah, there could have been okay. Like, more stuff happens with the family in the later books that and, show that other quite, things could have been done to get the family out of the way. And <laughs> but it is something needed to have happened. Something and, needed to be that catalyst. But and quite frankly, cause. there's quite frankly there's enough miscommunication in this family that it could totally have been something else, and Alex would still have been running around trying to fix it. But it is not, um, and it would. It would still have been the same book oh, and she could have still irrelevant. had the same journey. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will I will go ahead and accept interchangeable. Um, <laughs> she could have right. been the rejection... summoned to fight the end game boss of the video game, so to speak, and gone in guns blazing with guilt in her heart. Like, it would still have happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I. She would have done it for, like... She would have done it for Nova needing she would have... her to help his, save his arm. <laughs> like that would have happened too. Yeah. Oh gosh, you're right. It is interchangeable. She would Dang have, it. She I would have done it. Was... She would... <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got a. I've got. A, the, I've. I've multiple jokes. Uh. <laughs> she would have done it because Rishi looked at her with puppy eyes and said, "Please." <laughs> I know. I, I, was the, I know facetious. it's real, and I'm gonna go without you if you don't escort me. <laughs> I was being my <laughs> facetious with my all right. It's yeah. definitely it, maybe, and then and then you're right. You've talked me into interchangeable. I, I agree. Okay, um, oh, rejection. Need a lot of motivation the- to go to the go to the 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 fairy <laughs> um, world and go on an adventure to save people. She's not like I exactly think- ant- antithetical to this concept. I mm-hmm. think the rejection from family is only interchangeable if something else to the same degree of support loss. I I think that Nova it. had to exist and had to have motivation, but I think it's I think his trauma is interchangeable cuz he could yeah. have another motivation. You can something would have you, had he to could happen. have even have been he could have even had been like specifically cursed as in I've put the curse on you and I will take it off when you do right. thing thing yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. Or his family could it have not have been there be that particular truly reason. because of, you know, passing away and not having kicked him out or anything like that like yeah but yeah something that caused the magic to hit that level or something or something that had removed his support structure either would have worked yes. fine 
Yep, interchangeable. Uh, guilt. Okay. All right. This I I am firmly saying I really oh, believe no, this, this is this integral. Is integral. Plot. This is this is her the character's yeah. whole motivation. This is how she thinks. Yeah. This is how it's impacted her. This is why any of her decisions are what they are. <laughs> yeah, and why they make sense. Um, um care. Kidnapping guilt yes. makes a- as for aforementioned, it's not even on screen enough for us to rate it beyond mild. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, also maybe family rejection, yes. Because mm-hmm, Ke- yeah. Alex really doesn't it's, even care enough to like data pay attention. A thing. It's not harped on. It's not thrown there's in enough, your face at all. There's enough to empathize with, but if you haven't been through something like that, it's not pulling you through the emotions of that experience and if you have been through it it's it's a it's, mention, it's a mention of it and you're going to be affected by it to whatever level you are it's not making it any worse necessarily right misplaced all right guilt. The guilt heather we need your opinion on this one <laughs> i um, felt like this was really i felt like this was fine but you probably have a different opinion so what are the exact, uh, I, even though I'm the one that transcribes this and I've written it down enough. Um, the ratings. The, what are the <laughs> levels of care that we have we can give? No, we have no, not enough, enough, and yes. And then sometimes the distinction your mileage between may vary, not but enough, we've only done that like twice ever. Not enough and enough. It's So not enough is, yeah, we can tell they were trying and it didn't work. And enough is the amount that they did was sufficient, but it's not just straight up care. I would say enough. I would say okay. enough. I, I read, I did binge read this book. I had mm-hmm. to take like breaks, but they were like, let me put the book down, take a deep breath and then mm. go back into it. Okay. Not, <laughs> not uh, walking well. away. <laughs> not like, hold on, let me come back to this book in six months. Ah, right. Step right. away. Let me process. It was just very much like, well, it was, yep. Good job. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, but you could tell that it, if there had been less in it, we would have understood her less. We would have yes. oh, okay, that makes felt sense. the motivation less. Um, so there was enough care, but it wasn't kid gloves handled carefully. Right. Um, but I think that was intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is there any point where Alex is not our point of view for anything? I don't no. think so. Everything yeah. that happens outside of her point of view gets brought to her. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just and writing think, down Alex. I think that's the case. Magic's for handy for that. Yeah. Which all is right. part of the point Trope of this series. Spotter. It's a it's a point of view rotational series. So like we don't really want to know about anybody else in this one. Yeah. All right. Trope spotter. Uh my new favorite thing in our episodes is that we're doing trope spotter. It's great. I love it. All right. Uh this trope is um Sorry, I hit my microphone. All you right, hit your this microphone trope at the is... same time as Eclipse hit mine. It's fine. <laughs> trope spotter, badass, normal, Rishi, uh, doing so well that we tried to pick her for a topic and we couldn't because she's just doing <laughs> super well, tossed into bizarre magic land that she didn't know about five minutes ago, and, and she's doing just fine. That's her only <laughs> she's complaint got... is that she didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, she's, she's got. I wanted to go she's on magic got fake wings. She's hanging out with the bird people. It's literally um, like we just went through this traumatic experience, and you're here too, and you're just okay. Here's, she's like, here's, yeah, it's great. Let's go. <laughs> here's the thing. Like, what's, your, what's your pouty face for? Come on. Here's the thing. When I read this, <laughs> I thought she was the bait and was going to have a heel turn mm, because yeah. she just appears no. in the midst of them, giving orders to <laughs> the. the to the I'll be honest, I was kind of waiting for that people. for the whole series. Well, that's Not fair. just the first book. <laughs> <laughs> but like was- <laughs> she's so she's so comfortable that I was like, oh, you're the villain. And then yeah, that then was then. not true, and that's all I'm gonna say. But like it was so like she has no right being this comfortable in a world that could eat her up by accident because she has nothing and I think other than a- just like her own brain to to do anything she is this. a very good example of somebody who is a support for their people 
who takes care of herself well enough that she doesn't ha- have as much secondhand trauma. Oh, if she if is, we... she is not from a super broken background. She is not super vulnerable to different things, but she steps into the muck with them and what takes is... care of her own boundaries and everything, and is able to be there for them without it swallowing her. If Alex was a guy, we would be accusing him of sidelining the real main character, Rishi. Mm -hmm. Because Uh it reads like that. It reads like main character, man, main character can't do anything. Female main character (laughs) does everything for him and then gets no credit. Like, that's how it reads. Except that's not how this book is written. And even if Alex's gender reversed and nothing else changed, it wouldn't be like that because... The book is written better than that, but that's that you could yeah. accuse Rishi of being like the actual badass of the book, and she's not. Yeah, and she's not trying to be either. She's literally just like, "Hi, I'm here. I I care for you, and you're awesome, and I'm going to support you. And isn't this great? What do you need to do? What can I do?" <laughs> and then just is cool. <laughs> All right, I think we're, we're we have headed straight into favorite non traumatic thing about the book. Uh, <laughs> I I like Rishi. Rishi's great. I just I just I love she she shows up with the bird people and she's got fake wings. Like that. <laughs> I'm like See great. Like you're one of ours now. This is amazing. Actual villain heel turn, but it didn't happen. Oh um, Yeah, no, that's that's not what's going on. I, I wanted it though. I wanted that to happen and then it didn't. I was sad. Honestly, I, I don't know if you can argue that it's non-traumatic, but in my brain it is, so it's fine. No. Um, <laughs> I really like how... Stop hitting the microphone, Eclipse. Eclipse is my cat. Trust me, I can add to this chaos as well. He's on my shoulder hitting my microphone with his tail. Oh my um, god. So It's going to be the uh, worst episode to I edit love, so far. <laughs> I love Nova's marking description. How the tattoos mm. go up from... Mm-hmm. I love it. Every time it's described, I just mm, it's delicious. Um, and it's, it's also the ambiguity cool. about which ones are like magic tattoos and, and which, which ones, ones are, are regular tattoos. tattoos. Yeah, it's just his his description at the beginning of the book and how they it looked like they were like uh, facing. Uh, uh, wow, brain. We just talked about her. Uh, gab <laughs> dab dab do, no Rishi. One, yeah, Rishi. It's <laughs> like wow. I wanted to call her Rishmi, which is not correct. But they they're putting her in Nova like description wise, very similar in how Alex views them and sees them and reacts to them and everything. And I was just like, he's such a bad boy. Don't go for him. But also, <laughs> but also, <laughs> I get it. But also. Red flag, but also I get it. That's the Heather. That's not a flag. That's a full on stop sign that's intentionally yeah. trying to hit you in the face. <laughs> but it's just. But anyway, so like his general description is just awesome. But every time they talk about his tattoos, I'm just like, can I get the artwork for this? Can I? <laughs> can I? Can I? I don't want these tattoos, but I love. And and whenever it talks about them growing on it, it's just. Mm. Like, the cause for the tattoos is traumatic, but the actual tattoos are just awesome. <laughs> All right, Nicole, what was yours? Uh, I'm going to piggyback off of Heather. Um, mm-hmm. I <laughs> I thought that Alex's flip on the tattoo, on her opinion of the tattoos, was the funniest thing in the whole book. <laughs> um, <laughs> like... I thought it was hilarious. It was very good writing. It's very good visual depiction of what is happening. And it gives the reader something to latch on to that we are already kind of familiar with. And then Alex going from, ooh, pretty to, oh, God, oh, no, oh, my, not me. Like, it was the funniest thing. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I even, like, just laughed out loud when I read it. I was like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> that was so funny. Um, I'm not... I'm not with Heather on the oh yes him but like no I'm I I my, definitely my was like you're my favorite of, of character who I'm interested is very different from my real life sense don't worry Nova uh, is the most relatable character in the entire <laughs> book to me and like mm-hmm. I that's also, just how that is <laughs> also with the with the markings and the tattoos 
Can I just say, I also really appreciate that the mark of, um, oh gosh, corruption wasn't physical disability. Oh, absolutely. Yes. yes. Very good. Huh, to be on the other side of this. Hello. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and on TikTok and on... Nope. Let me rephrase that. You can find me on Twitter at MamaDragon20. And you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at MamaDragons underscore Den. And that's no apostrophe. Um, as well as I am... A semi-consistent guest on the epi- on the uh, podcast Crit Chat, uh, and then I am one of the co-hosts of Point and Play, which is a uh, music and dance discussion podcast that I host with Nicole. Oh, and Crit Chat, by the way, is a D and D based discussion comedy podcast for DM advice. Um, so those are those are the big podcast projects and then you can also find me typically every other sunday uh on twitch um playing through curse of strahd uh and it's called oops all barovians um but if you find me on twitter the list of projects and things that i'm in is all on there so that's going to be your best bet to find information for me excellent and uh, thank you so much for joining us for Labyrinth Lost. We'll catch you in a fort hi- fortnight for Bruja Born. All music used in this podcast was created by Nicole as Heartbeat Art Co. and is used with permission. Our transcriptionist is Heather. Follow her on Twitter at MamaDragon20. We're proud members of the Certain Point of View Network. Find all the CPOV shows at www.certainpov.com. You can contact us on Twitter at Books That Burn or by email at Books That Burn at Yahoo.com. Please consider leaving us a tip at Kofi.com slash Books That Burn or becoming a monthly supporter on Patreon.com slash books that burn all patrons get access to our upcoming book list bonus content including the second half of all interviews and will receive a one-time shout out to get updates on our written reviews recent episodes and newly completed transcripts subscribe to our fortnightly newsletter at buttondown.email slash books that burn you can find us on apple Podcasts, pandora spotify or wherever you get your podcasts please leave us a review wherever you're listening this helps people to find the show thanks for listening we'll be back in two weeks